Get ready for the greatest roast of all time. The Roast of Tom Brady. A Netflix live event happening May 5th. Hosted by Kevin Hart, the seven-time world champion gets his cleats held to the fire by famous friends and frenemies on an unforgettable night where everything is fair game. Tune in on May 5th at 5 p.m. Pacific time for The Roast of Tom Brady, live only on Netflix. With threats to our nation waiting around every corner, adaptability is more important than ever. When conditions change without notice, quick strategic thinking is crucial. And with obstacles consistently impending, determination is essential in overcoming them. It's this willingness, decisiveness, and resilience that sets Marines apart. With our fighting spirit, we don't just fight battles, we win them. Marines are the constant our nation counts on to fight the unknown. And through adaptable problem solving, we do just that. Learn more at Marines.com. What I like to do is make sure that everyone in our program has what they need so I can be demanding of the results, whether it be providing time, my energy, food, equipment. I want to make sure that, that this program has what is best so every person within it can worry about being their best and we get the best results. In high school football, some programs stand out not only for their wins on the field, but also for the values they instill in their players and coaches. Under the leadership of head coach Ryan Knowles, Sandpoint High School in Sandpoint, Idaho, has built a program of significance through the principles of servant leadership. Coach Knowles' approach emphasizes serving others, creating a positive environment, and fostering growth among his players and staff. After playing and serving as a graduate assistant at the University of Idaho, Coach Knowles spent 12 years at Colgate serving in various roles as defensive line coach, co-defensive coordinator, and special teams coordinator before returning home to become the head coach at his alma mater, Sandpoint High School. One key aspect of Coach Knowles' servant leadership philosophy is the emphasis on providing for both the players and the coaching staff. By ensuring that everyone has the resources they need to succeed, Coach Knowles creates an environment where individuals can thrive and excel. This approach not only leads to better results on the field, but also fosters a sense of teamwork and camaraderie among all members of the program. Furthermore, Coach Knowles has shown that servant leadership extends beyond the football field. Through innovative fundraising efforts utilizing the Vertical Raise platform, Sandpoint High School has been able to raise substantial funds to support the program. By leveraging technology and community support, Coach Knowles has demonstrated how servant leadership can translate into tangible results that benefit the entire football program and its participants. Stay tuned for our Winning Edge takeaways following the interview. What you see on tape is a direct reflection of what you teach and how you teach. Video is important, but if you don't teach well, you're not going to like what you see on your video. First Down Playbook has been helping coaches teach better for 13 years. It allows you to present installs, playbooks, and practice cards in half the time with NFL quality. Coaching tools like video pairing, a player app, practice schedules, and wristband sheets have made First Down Playbook a program management system with everything in one place. If you're in a position of leadership with your football program, receive a free one-week look at First Down Playbook. Call them at 512-814-6158 or visit them on their website or social media. Mention Coach and Coordinator Podcast or use the coupon code COACH24 to receive a $100 discount off the normal $700 First Down Playbook team membership price. Links and the phone number are in the show notes. On today's episode of Coaching Coordinator, we focus on servant leadership and how being a servant leader has allowed our guest to really build a program of significance in his state. And we're talking with Ryan Knowles, who's the head coach of Sandpoint High School in Sandpoint, Idaho. Coach, great to have you here on the podcast. Well, thanks for having me. I've been listening to a lot of your stuff in the past and uh, excited to be part of it. Ryan, it's great to have you here. I know your background leading up to this, you spent some time coaching college football at Colgate. Obviously, some great influences there with the coach you worked with and Dan Hunt, who's done some clinics for us on Lawrence First and Goal and supporting those efforts. And Lawrence First and Goal, obviously, that's about servant leadership too. But 
servant leadership a big part of what you do. And you know, before we got to talking, you said you've been part of kind of both extremes of of the continuum of leadership from the dictator side to the servant leader side. And you've seen the same outcomes. You've seen success with that, but you feel there's definitely some advantages to being a servant leader. Yeah. You know, when I talk about being parts of both of it, I've seen, I've seen ADs that are both dictators and servants, and I've been about part of head coaches that are dictators and servants. And when I took the head job at Sandpoint High School, I had to make my decisions. And based off of those things, Being a servant leader really, really is important to me. One, I think it makes the process that much more enjoyable. I enjoy providing for the kids. I I love seeing that, but I also love providing for the coaches. I want to make sure that they have every resource that they need to be successful. And that allows me to be very demanding of them and the results that they provide and and reach. Because, you know, I, I really am a firm believer in treating adults like adults. I don't want to treat my staff like kids and micromanage them because that that squashes their passion. And sometimes that'll bite you. Sometimes your coaches want a little more direction than you're willing to give. You know, so so that's that's the balance of it. But the top down approach or the kids are the top of the triangle. It all stems to me. You know, has really helped me enjoy this process. I think that's interesting, Coach. I mean. I- I could see, especially if you have a younger staff, you do need that direction. But this is about everybody's growth, right? Being a servant leader is helping everybody grow. And ultimately, you're developing other servant leaders. So those guys can go out and lead without dictating. And as you said, the the results might be the same. Outcomes might be the same from a dictator approach to a, a servant approach. But this is also about the experience. This is also about what are you creating? that people walk away from that can make them better in life and help other people as well. That's right. That's right. And when it, when it comes to, like you say, sir, what, how much time, how much time do you need to coach your players? I'm talking to the assistants right now, players, how, you know, here's the weight room. We open it up over vacations and I tell them, Hey, you know, if you're going on vacation, great, but, but I'm going to be here. I'm going to, I'm going to make sure this, this place is open. If I'm in town and come on in and, and you got a place to work out and, I really feel like that they see that and they appreciate that and and the parents appreciate that that you're providing that for the kids and you're serving the kids. We do something cool it, during the football season. We feed our kids every night, Monday through Friday, and we have a whole group of team moms that come in and and you know cook cook burgers and 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 cook chicken and make t- chicken teriyaki bowls and you know so so there there are the moms serving the kids. There's the program serving the kids, you know, and, and there's always two rules to that. You pick up after yourself and make sure you say thank you to them. And, uh, you know, I think it's a valuable lesson and, and it, it creates that team chemistry that we're here to serve. We're all here. We're all here together and we're in these seats for a, a very short time. There's been a lot of Sandpoint High School football coaches before me and there'll be some after me. I'm here now to make the best out of it. So. And I know in being a servant leader, I mean, it is about providing. Right. And it's it's not providing all the answers. It's providing a framework. And and ultimately that allows you to do a better job in taking that. That's right. That's right. And you know, we make a lot of decisions on a on a daily basis. And you know, I, we we are ultimately gonna make some wrong decisions in this process. But if you serve the kids and, and you're transparent about that, then you know, sometimes it makes those some of those those stickier situations a little bit easier. A lot of my parent emails come to me as, thank you for all you do for this program. I have an issue with this, you know? So it, it, when those come through, it, it feels good. It feels good. Okay, things aren't perfect. Things aren't perfect, but you respect the time and the process that's going on here. What I like to do is make sure that everyone in our program has what they need so I can be demanding of the results, whether it be providing time, my energy, food, equipment. I want to make sure that that this program has what is best so every person within it can worry about being their best and we get the best results. I think it's interesting how you frame that. You said, so I can be demanding of the results rather than demanding of, of people for you, is there a difference in that, in the way that you see it? Absolutely. You know, as a head coach, you have to look at the whole outcome. You can't just look at the offense or the defense or the D line anymore. You have to look at everybody. So, so the results, 
I tell the team this all the time. The only person on in our organization responsible for winning a game is me. Everyone else has their own little department. I'm the only one. So I want to make sure that each of those departments, you know, whether it be the, the offensive unit or the defensive unit, have, has what they need. And I'll worry about the winning and losing and how we balance that all out. You talked about providing. And having been a head coach myself, I wanted to provide more for the programs that I was a part of. And fundraising becomes a big part of that. And you've had some incredible fundraisers utilizing a platform called Vertical Raise, who's the sponsor of the Coaching Coordinator podcast. The results, I mean, for a small town, these might be the best results across the country, having done three that have been in the 150s, 120s, and 130s, very big funds raised. And it's not that they that you weren't doing fundraising before, but you utilize this platform, you utilize this technology to – basically almost double what was a traditional fundraiser. Yeah. And when I took this job, one of my mentors, Satini Paloa was my high school coach and he, he coached it for years and he still lives in town. And he told me, he said, Ryan, if you take this job, just remember that, that the high school coaches at some point has to be a fundraiser. You have to raise money. The school district does what they can, but it, it doesn't do enough. So I hit the ground running with fun, with my fundraising hat on like, all right, this is part of the job. When I first started, I didn't have a vertical race. We just did a truck, truck raffle every year. We did a loss in the 50s car, like an old Corvette. We'd, we'd raffle it off, do the tickets, beat the straights, like, like a lot of us have done. COVID comes around, and I'm sitting on the couch. And you know, if you remember right in the, in the shutdown, the CNN live reports and all, all of that. So at one point, you're afraid to open the door. You don't know what's outside. And this is right when we got our first truck donated. And we're just getting ready to to go beat the streets and, you know, the COVID hits and we go a complete shutdown. So we actually just, you know, turned the truck back over to the dealership. They sold it. And I called Matt Troxel of Vertical Race and said, hey, we, we need to run. I need to run a fundraiser. And he said, well, I got just a thing for you. And I'd heard about his company. And we launched a fundraiser from the couch. And I'm not kidding you. I didn't leave the house. I didn't leave the house and in three weeks we had raised $36,000 and, you know, it felt pretty good. You know, I was like, okay, not bad. Didn't pay the bills that year, but got a lot out of that for just trying to hit the curveball here. Like we all did in that time. So the following year comes about and, and Taylor and son Chevrolet in town is the one who uh, donated, donates the, the car. When they say they donate it, you know, it's, it's, it's an amazing donation by the family and the dealership both. So they donate a car and we put it into Vertical Rays in the sense that everyone that donates to Vertical Rays gets a ticket for this car that we pull at, at halftime of our homecoming game in October. And and we blow this thing out of the water. I mean, we, we raise $150,000. And going back to, again, I, I, I share this with my mentor, Coach Paloa, and he's just shaking his head, you know, because the the best they ever did with Alberta Graves was was about seventy five thousand dollars. So we doubled that. And he's shaking my head in, in two things. One, vertical rays is amazing. But two, more humbling for me was, you know, Ryan, that's that's a testament to your program and how much people believe in what you're doing there. People don't donate to things that they don't believe in. And so it was a very, very humbling experience. And vertical rays really took it to the next level. I was, it was, there's no doubt about it. So, yeah, I, yeah. I've been able to learn a lot about vertical rays here over the last six months. Trox was on the podcast when he was making that transition during COVID from AAF to vertical rays. And honestly, I didn't know a lot about it then. And, and of course, I do now. But what an incredible platform. I know any fundraiser you do, traditional fundraiser is a lot of work. And I think you hit on an important aspect of there. And I, I always believe this to be true is that when you're raising funds, it's not necessarily because, oh, I, I you know, I'm going to win, you know, this, these Super Bowl squares and win some money here, or, you know, that's part of it, or I, I want this cookie dough or, or right. whatever it might be. Ultimately, they're buying or donating because they support you, because they support a program. And so when you have a platform that just can get to more people by harnessing technology, 
ultimately it's just going to raise the amount of funds you're able to bring in. Well, that's, that's just the thing is, is people want to donate. I've donated to hundreds of things over the years and I want it to be simple. And when I launch a fundraiser, I like to get the kids to think about those people that when they get the donation request by email, that person is going to reach into their pocket, pull out their wallet and put in their credit card information. I hope we all have four or five people like that. You know, I can think of the the people that I would do that for in my life. And I don't have to write a check. I don't have to get a stamp. You know, I, I lived in New York coaching at Colgate for all the years. My family's in, a lot of my family's in Idaho. And you know, they, they'd ask, but I just never get around to mailing the check, you know? So, so now I don't have to worry about it. We can just do it online. Two things that leads to one cash free, cash free. You don't have kids running around with cash in their hand and, and baggies and all that stuff. And those get to be transactional nightmares. And the other thing about vertical raise, that's that's just such a difference maker is, is live reps. You know, I'm a live rep in North Idaho and I get to go and, and talk to coaches all over there and share these stories, but I also get to talk with them about sports and kids and, and the school districts and the leadership models that we already talked about. And you really get to know the fabric of the area. So that's really been, we talked about this a little bit before, but that, that became a fix for me because I don't get to recruit anymore. You know, going school to school when I was in at Colgate, I was recruiting Ohio and, and Pittsburgh. So I'd go, I, I know all these high school coaches all over the place and I didn't realize how much I missed that. So I started doing vertical raise again, getting to get them talk with these people again. So, yeah, I, I think in knowing how the technology works, all those things you described here are things I really did not want to deal with in fundraising. You know, it was a necessary evil things like, OK, we're collecting money today and just being sure of. Hey, let's let's get some boosters in here too, and everybody sit down at the table as as this money's coming in, so everything's clean and clear. And it's uh, I mean, it's all a nightmare that's solved by the technology. And you know, even today, I, I know kids will come knocking on the door, and a lot of times I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't have any cash right now, <laughs> right? That's so right. I think that's one aspect. Of the other, when you're harnessing technology like this, and you're utilizing. You know, these kids have contacts all over the place. The fundraiser doesn't necessarily always inundate your community being inundated with fundraising. That's right. And as I go through, you know, I run vertical raises for other programs in Sandpoint as well. And, you know, everyone always talks about donor fatigue and, and we're fundraising too much. Well, public schools have to fundraise, you know, and if you're not using vertical raise, you're doing something else. And you know, why not use the leader in the industry? Why not use the the most simplest approach, the one that requires the least out of the coaches? And, you know, I, I look around and, and at all the schools I represent and all most of the most of the championship programs in the area like vertical race because they can just call me and say, hey, when when can you come in? I'll give them a time and I show up and get their kids organized and leave. And they get a check three weeks later for about ten thousand dollars. So, I mean, that's the complete example, but that's pretty dang, <laughs> pretty dang consistent. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I appreciate you sharing that. And as we said, Vertical Rays, we're really appreciative of them being a sponsor on this podcast. Things that can help coaches, and I I firmly believe in uh, Vertical Rays and what they do. As coaches, we know that some of the biggest hurdles to our team's success can come from off the field. Your team needs support to tackle the endless list of expenses, uniforms, training equipment, travel, and more. But raising that money can feel like a full-time job. Thankfully, there's Vertical Raise. Vertical Raise is the premier online fundraising platform using innovative technology to create the easiest and most efficient system available. Raise more money in less time with a local fundraising coach who works with your team every step of the way to customize the ideal fundraiser. With options for online donations, digital discount cards, premium product sales, and even spirit shops, Vertical Raise has top-of-the-line solutions for every fundraising style. To find out more, visit verticalraise.com and we'll get you connected with an exclusive offer on your first fundraiser. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda, you never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. 
to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, price line. I do want to get back into your program and a small school, a little over a thousand students, but more than 10% of the students in that school are playing football. And that's, you know, not common anymore to see even in a bigger school having 140. I mean, I know football has numbers in sports in general struggled here recently, but you know, you see that in football, decreasing numbers, et cetera. You guys have 140 playing in your program. And, And what's great is the way it's set up for you. You're able to work with those guys daily too. As you said, I'm throwing jabs instead of left hooks. That's right. Fortunate to have them in lifting class every day and being able to work with them and see them, you know, and I'd bring, I'd bring a group in before school every day and have a group after school every day too. So it's, it's the full package, but trying to give them all the pieces that, that, a, that a quality program needs having them in class. I get to do the, the grade checks and the academic checks and the, you know, I get to throw them on a scale and make sure that they're, you know, they're gaining weight. And obviously we get to bench squat, clean deadlift, you know, who, who doesn't, you know, hopefully <laughs> if, if you want a chance, you got to be doing the, the basics there, but we get to, you know, we get to do speed school after school and uh, it's pretty powerful, pretty powerful setup here. I know we talked a little bit about core values before we got going and for you, you have seven core values that really drive the way you do things. And and I think you're right in stating this, that it's tough to teach seven core values. One, just the the time you have, you know, we had Steve Steele on seven time state champion from S- South Dakota And he talked about two, he called them non-negotiables, but really what he called turn off the darkness and then family. Those are the two core values that they're going to teach all the time. And then they tailor something for that next team that fits with them. And I think it's the same point you're making here that if I teach seven, there's going to be things lost in the shuffle. It's going to get watered down. We're going to lose the message. And I think being focused, being simple. You know, whether that's your core values or your offense or defense, there's uh, there's a lot more that's going to lend itself to better execution of those things. Well, that's right. And, and, and although I work my seven into everything, I hammer home a couple of them and really, really two of them. Like, Leo, like, for example, our motto this year coming up is is execute 105. And, you know, that's a little bit of a coded word because people ask me, what does execute 105 mean? And I'll, I'll share it on here. We lost in the quarterfinals last year in the playoffs, and we our first round of the playoffs, I don't think we could have played better. We had 10 explosive plays. We didn't give up any on defense. We had five turnovers. Uh, we ran the ball for 300 yards. We didn't give up 100 yards. We, did, we got all of our goals, and we executed lights out. Well, we go on the road, and it was the opposite. We didn't execute, played a very good team that that – that we fell to. So when I look at the difference between those two games, I wanted to emphasize this year was with the term execute. So I'm going to use the word execute a lot this year. That's one of my core values, but I don't use that every year. This is a year, you know, we talk about it, but I'm, I'm hammering it home this year. The 105, we're the 105th Sandpoint football team to take the field. That leads into the humility theme, you know, like let's be humble. There's 104 teams before us. There's going to be however many teams after us. And this is 105. Let's worry about, let's worry about the 105. Let's be humble to that. We're not necessarily special, you know, to the 104, but we are special because it's the now and we control this. But there's a couple, a couple of themes that I work in. The ones that I, they hammer weekly it comes back to toughness, you know, and everyone talks about toughness, but trying to take it to the next level. Toughness is the ability to withstand strain. And I try and get all my kids to recite that. What is toughness? The ability to withstand strain. And and everyone jumps to the word toughness and, oh yeah, football's, f- football's tough, football's tough. Well, there's a lot of other things that are tough out there, not just football. So taking it to the bigger picture of how are you withstanding the strain of the classroom? of your social life, of your family life, you know, of your financial life. It's a great segue into, this is a constant battle. How do we, how do we toughen ourselves up? So, you know, you related to a storm coming through and, you know, I always, one of my first examples is a barn in the middle of the field and the tornado's coming. Is that, is that barn going to be there when the tornado's passed or is it going to blow away? And, and how can we, how can we make ourselves as, 
as tough, as resilient as possible, and not as fragile as we can be. And that leans back to the weight room and everything we do in there on a, on a constant, you know, all year round process. The toughness is really important to me. And we use that a lot. The second one is courage. Courage is mistaked as toughness. A lot of times courage is the ability to face uncomfortable situations. And we all have them. We got to, we got to some point approach conflict, you know, but we got to have the ability to do that. I think it takes a lot of courage to play football. I don't think it takes courage to coach football. I think it takes courage to play football. And that's, I heard that from somewhere and, and it struck a chord. No question, you know, to go out and coach, we love it. We don't have to go get in harm's way. We get to send our kids in there, but we don't have to do it. So it doesn't take courage to coach well, but the players, absolutely. So we talk about that. We talk about the courage it takes and how we can build that courage to get a kid that maybe is a little bit afraid and shy and, and worried about going into the situation to be confident. And, you know, I've watched the weight room transform kids into being confident individuals that are ready to go out and, and be the hammer and not the nail, if you will. I love it. I mean, love hearing the story of your program, how you've built it on servant leadership. You know, certainly would love to have you back again. I think there's a lot you have to share through your experiences. We just touched on some of those here today, uh, but best of luck to you and the Sandpoint Bulldogs here in 2024. And I'm going to have to get in on that truck ra raffle and win it. So I, I have a reason to get out to Idaho. <laughs> well, that's a beautiful truck and uh it'll be sitting on the lot when you win it okay and come out here and enjoy sam when i know awesome coach great great talking with you here and again good luck this year thanks for having me here are winning as takeaways and ideas for implementation one embrace servant leadership incorporating servant leadership into your coaching approach can help you build a program of significance by prioritizing the needs of your players and staff Providing resources and fostering a supportive environment, you can create a positive and impactful program. Two, focus on core values. Define and emphasize core values that align with your coaching philosophy and the program goals. Keep these values simple and focused, ensuring that they're consistently reinforced. This will help shape the culture of your team and guide decision-making processes. And three, utilize technology for fundraising. Leveraging technology platforms like Vertical Rays can revolutionize your fundraising efforts by streamlining the donation process, reaching a broader audience, and reducing administrative burdens. You can increase fundraising success and support your program's financial needs effectively. And looking at all the platforms that utilize technology, Vertical Rays has many advantages and benefits for a program. The link to Vertical Rays is in the show notes. Follow all we're doing at coachandcoordinator.com. Sign up there for our weekly tip sheet, which shares the best ideas of each week. And follow us on X at Coach K Grabowski.